A long way still remains to ensure that the benefits of peace can be enjoyed by the future generations of Indonesians in Aceh. Even now, after more than seven years since the Helsinki MOU, there are still many bumps in the road to peace, such as the dispute on the use of a provincial flag and the difficulty in implementing Islamic bylaws in a country that upholds pluralism. I asked President Mati Atisari about what he thinks still needs to be done to fully implement the Aceh Peace Agreement. You know, if you look at what's happening in Indonesia, we, we had the peace agreement in Aceh in 2005, you know, yeah. seven years, yeah. um, six years down the road. I mean, what's your assessment of what's happening in Indonesia, and particularly in that part of No, I'm, I'm pleased. It, it shows my, what I said to you, that the real work starts because the Acehnese have to learn to deal with central government. And without us, the danger is that we become a problem if we stay for too long. And I very often during these seven years thought that we might have left a bit earlier, but historically many peace agreements fail during the first five years. And I didn't want Aceh to, to fail, and, and we stayed. There are still issues which haven't been done from the peace agreement. For instance, there's no... Uh, uh, human rights court it's in the, in a neighboring province but not there and there's no truth and reconciliation commission but they don't need us if when they are ready to do that sort of thing they do it and it's and I always say that and I ruled very firmly last year last summer that now our I will come to answer to play golf <laughs> <laughs> and see you all and, and to Indonesia and perhaps uh, play golf in Jakarta or elsewhere as well perhaps with the vice president uh, former vice president Kalla and other friends there but uh, you have to know when you are useful and you can help but you should not prolong your stay because then, then very often the people avoid their own responsibility or you'll be an unwelcome guest after a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, that danger is there, but, but some processes have taken enormously long time. So I'm, why I like the Aceh is that it's, it went actually so well that it's an example how things should be done and how seriously the parties must look at it. Perhaps it was a Finnish winter because it was much colder. And <laughs> I, I don't know when we have plenty of pictures where we are all standing in the snow there, more or less. And I, I wonder that why did they like the snow? Because I felt that I would like to be born in slightly warmer climate. Than well, it cools tempers, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, and it's also perhaps one aspect is that we were, you know, you have seen the, it's it's interesting in a sense that you are isolated there. It's not very far from Helsinki. It's a two-floor building. Everyone can have their own quarters there. But I, I could encourage them to start talking as soon as possible, without me. Because they have to be able to live together. I'm an occasional friend and visitor, but, but they have to learn to live and see eye to eye. And it requires very much from those who lead the negotiations. And your Minister of Justice was, was as I said, I praised him for, for the role he had. President Atisari's Indonesian government counterpart in the peace negotiations and in putting together the Helsinki MOU over seven years ago is former Vice President Yusuf Kala, also known for his skills in conflict resolution. Kala sponsored the first efforts to restart talks with GAM and their exact leaders in Sweden in early 2004, while he was still the coordinating minister of people's welfare in President Megawati's cabinet, and also managed to find the right mediator for the talks through his business connection, a Finnish businessman, who led him to President Atisari. Setiap perundingan itu dalam damai itu namanya kompromi yang dicapai kompromi. Kompromi itu artinya 
di satu pihak memberikan, di satu pihak menerima, di satu pihak memberikan, di satu menerima. Karena itu kompromi itu tidak ada yang bisa mencapai maksimum. Harus ada hal-hal uh, yang diberikan dan diterima. Nah, dalam hal Aceh ini yang uh, diberikan oleh pihak GAM itu ialah katakanlah satu, pernyataan untuk uh, bersatu dalam NKRI tetap. Kedua, uh, kembali ke bersama-sama dan uh, menyerahkan atau menghancurkan senjata. Nah, itu saja. Yang lainnya adalah kewajiban pemerintah, yaitu memberikan uh, otonomi khusus, memperlakukan aturan-aturan yang uh, menguntungkan seperti di bidang ekonomi, memberikan 70% bagian migas, memberikan hak-hak pemerintahan, memberikan uh, fasilitas-fasilitas anggaran yang lebih baik. Itu kan dicapai seperti itu dan juga bagaimana memberikan kesejahteraan kepada masyarakat baik uh, uh, kombatan GAM atau masyarakat umum yang korban daripada itu. Itu isi antara lain daripada perundingan itu. Nah, di sini letak pentingnya Tisari Kalau terjadi e, Katakanlah Perselisihan pandangan di kemudian hari Maka e, hak Duduk Dua pihak, hmm. hanya Indonesia dan Anggam Kemudian Tisari e, Untuk Mencari pertemuan, kalau tidak Maka diambil suara terbanyak, otomatis Yang menentukan suaranya dia kan hmm. Tapi se sejauh ini kita belum pernah Selalu ada e, persetujuan Belum pernah terjadi minta pandangan itu tapi memfasilitasi dia loh dia loh tambahan ya itu dia dan juga dia secara rutin datang ke Indonesia sebagai sahabat. Did you still have good and close relations with Indonesia and the Indonesian government until yes. now? Yes. Yes. Of course we 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 were successful in what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. uh, President Tsarina finally if you could choose the sort of The mediation that you could, you know, you're asked to do these days, and we have quite a lot of conflicts all over the world. And there's one uh, conflict that ha still hasn't been solved until now in the, in the Middle East peace, con uh, Middle East conflict. But what would you like to help mediate? And now there may be, you may see our name uh, later on this year in having been asked to to help this face already when some sort of agreement has been reached in, in certain conflict. And there's still a lot to be negotiated from that. It's not so ready agreement as we had in, in, in the case of Aceh, that everything that needed to be agreed was agreed. But it's more an agreement intent to continue, that you may see us, uh, CMI, being asked to help in those who are actually doing the negotiations. So there are different roles uh, and, and uh, we, we have to try to mm -hmm. see can we in that sort of situations uh, be of assistance and that sort of things. There are certain conflicts I, I find it very difficult, for instance, to think that in Middle East, if we would ever get to the real negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians, first of all, the first prerequisite is that you objectively deal with both. And that's not an easy thing for, for many governments to do. But I, I would say that whoever is a negotiator for instance in Middle East they have to have a main government and, and I, I say main government uh, particularly the United States backing you whatever you do and most probably you would require in this case I wouldn't exclude even an American mm. mediator mm.